Last time on Jamboreaky Reviews, Jamboreaky was struggling to pick his next review lock and decided to have a drink to cool down from the heat. Unfortunately, someone had tampered with his apple juice. All that bloody git! Jamboreaky woke up in the home of Mortius, a sociopathic demon from another dimension, who forced Jamboreaky to review Frozen. Well, that's the worst kind of torture, that is. After Jamboreaky confessed that he didn't like Frozen, Mortius got upset but Jamboreaky managed to convince him to send him home. Little did Jamboreaky know that Mortius had cheekily sent him to a completely different place. Where's Jamboreaky ended up like? Hopefully it won't anywhere in the south. Um, I don't live here. What the fuck? This isn't my home. He was meant to send me there, but he sent me here. Therefore, he is a bastard. Fine, okay, whatever. Howdy folks, Jambreaky here. The BFG. So, I had the book read to me very frequently at bedtime by my parents, and I watched this movie a lot. I loved them both as a kid. But I've not experienced either since then, so what do I think of this movie now? The BFG is a fantasy adventure movie based on the book by Roald Dahl. When an orphan girl called Sophie wakes up one night, she spots a mysterious giant figure walking through the streets. The figure catches her peeking and takes her to his world. It turns out that the shadowy presence was a big friendly giant who creates and delivers dreams to humans. He took her away because he didn't want her to report him to the authorities and get trapped in a zoo. So the BFG takes Sophie around the giant country as she encounters many magical things and evil evil human-eating giants. This movie mainly centers on Sophie's tour through the BFG's world, a wonderfully fantastical place. We learn about the culture, language, food, drink, and secrets of this world. It may be a place of danger, but it's also full of beauty, magic, and wonder. Getting to know the BFG's world was a very enchanting and exciting experience for me. It's also really heartwarming watching Sophie and the BFG slowly bond as they share their customs and cultures with each other. Their relationship is so endearing that it's like they were destined to become a family. They click together so well. This movie has a brilliant sense of humour too. It's quirky, silly, and often very dry. There's something delightfully charming about the observations and remarks that our characters make about each other's cultures. This style of comedy really fits the British characters and setting too, because this is our sense of humour. This is how we comment on the world around us and respond to people. Now, this movie is kind of small compared to more ambitious animated features, but I wouldn't say it's boring or underwhelming, far from it. The giants present a realistic threat and do cause scary trouble now and again. The giant's world is amazing to look at and has plenty of interesting, weird things to discover. Plus, the characters are likeable enough to keep me engaged in whatever they're doing. I think that the small scale of the film gives it a patient, laid-back feel that helps us to take the time to immerse ourselves in the dreamlike world. The simplicity of the film is what makes it so charming and sweet. I'm going to give five points to the content of this film. The BFG is a lovable and charming character. His naive perception of the English language is adorable, his passion for creating dreams is inspiring, and watching him grow into a braver giant is incredible. Some of his decisions may seem morally questionable, but we do find out why he makes them. His heart is in the right place, but certain circumstances and risks make things difficult. Sophie is an energetic, polite, and clever little girl with distinct English manners and values that make her a very endearing character. I love how she tries to soak in everything to do with the giant's world. It shows how curious and interested she is. Then, later in the film, she actually uses what she's learned to her advantage to come up with some very smart ideas. The giants may be really dopey, but they are so terrifying. Even to this day, I still find them to be kind of scary. And it's not just because they're huge. The lack of conscience and brutal cruelty also make them intimidating. 
The Queen isn't exactly a realistic depiction of what the Queen of England possibly acts like in real life, but that's not the point. She's meant to represent what children might think she acts like, which fits the film's child's eye view of the world. She's quirky and witty, but also dignified and noble. She's a very entertaining and interesting depiction of the Queen. I'm going to give five points to the characters in this film. The secret magical areas of the giant's world are a sight to behold, a sparkling, shining vision of beautiful fantasy. It's hard not to be mesmerized by the gorgeous visuals of this dreamy world. The character animation can be a bit jerky and awkward, which is distracting at times. Each character is still well performed though. The gangly gestures of the giant add to his eccentric personality, the dry expressions of the queen reflect her witty charm, the intrigue and caution in Sophie's movements show her curiosity as well as her fear. Plus, the violent actions of the giants perfectly reflect their dangerous Neanderthal behavior. The character animation may be kind of unrefined, but the characters' personalities are still captured superbly through their rough, sketchy movements. I'm going to give four points to the animation in this film. The always wonderful David Jason voices the BFG. He gives the character a childlike innocence and energy that makes him sound adorably lovable. What? Me? Gobbling up human beings? <gasps> Oh, all the others, yes, but not me. Oh, I is a nice giant. Oh, I is a freaky giant. There's not another giant like me in all a giant country. I is the big friendly giant. Amanda Root is very cute and sweet as Sophie. She delivers her lines naturally while also sounding very enthusiastic about the things that Sophie encounters. But no, it's facing the wrong way. The bubbles are going down instead of up. Of course, bubbles is not going up. <laughs> they do where I come from. Bubbles going up is a flush bunking disaster. Don Anderson voices the evil giants. He gives them rough, deep voices to make them sound effectively threatening. What you got in here? Uh, nothing. Uh, I's not got anything. You been talking in here? I try. Angela Thorne is very humble and graceful as the queen, performing her character with a great wit and dignity. Oh, do let him sing if he wants to. Doesn't want to sing. I enjoy music at breakfast. In Scotland, they play the bagpipes outside my window. Oh, <laughs> whiz popping is better than bagpipes, Magister. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I'm going to give five points to the voice acting in this film. The music for this movie is very much of its time, which actually works in the film's favour. The music is so campy and retro that it actually fits the weird ideas and fantastical tone of the film. It beautifully supports the magical atmosphere of the film, through ethereal ambience and otherworldly sounds. I feel like the fantasy elements of the film are elevated by the music score because it sounds so strange and chanting and celestial. Plus, the music is also versatile enough to adapt to different tones. It sounds tense and creepy when evil giants step into a scene. Then, when the action builds up later in the film, the music becomes excitingly thrilling. There's also an original music number too. It's called Whiz Popping. It's a catchy and fun song about flatulence. Yes, it's a song about farting, which may sound immature, but I think it adds to the BFG's adorable childish personality. And it's a very memorable song. I'm going to give five points to the music in this film. To conclude, the BFG may not be as grand or polished as most animated features, but I think its charm lies in its simplicity. It has likeable characters, a dark imagination, a quirky sense of humour, an immersive world, and a dreamlike atmosphere that entranced me. Some people may be put off by the jerky animation or the small scale of the film, but I personally really loved it. The BFG has gained a total of 24 points, which translates to four and three quarters dreaming strawberries out of five. If you enjoyed such films as The Witches or Return to Oz, then I think you might really enjoy the BFG. I have been Jamboreeki and I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, then I encourage you to like, subscribe and share. I'd also really appreciate it if you could support me on my Patreon. In the next episode of Jamboreeki Reviews, I'm going to carry on Roll Doll Month with Fantastic Mr. Fox. 
What is that? Oh dear. I think that the person that lives here has come home. And I think they're a giant. Oh! I better get out of here. Oh! <laughs> I I smell the blood of an internet review.